So far, we've created art for 14 prompts using a whole range of medium subjects and art styles. Now we're going into week three of Peachtober. Let's have a look and see what the 15th prompt is. Ooh, lamp. Like one of those old street lamps. That could be really cool, but we could do it in a slightly different way. Maybe a bit more like impressionistic or something. Just an idea. I don't know what we're gonna make. For this prompt, we're using coloured ink again. I've not used this since last Peachtober, where we used it for literally every single prompt. Oh, by the way, every monthly art challenge I've done is on playlists in my channel. They're all super organised. We've done Inktober, Peachtober, Mermaid, and March of Robots. Honestly, I'm surprised that there's this much ink left. I thought I'd pretty much used it all and there was no way I'd be able to reuse it this time. Well, I guess the yellow is pretty low and that is an important one. I'd obviously used it the most. I'm using the wet on wet technique for this messy piece. That's the way I liked using. It's really cool seeing just how much it spreads in water, like far more so than watercolour. Adding some splatters to this page of course. And since the sky is pretty much done, I'm using what's left on my brush to fill this page in the Daily Doodle Diary. This is something I've always done because I really don't like to waste art supplies supplies, even if it's just the tiniest amount on my brush. We're going to add blue for the skyline. It's not detailed. This is more like an illusion of a city. Very subtle lines. I'm reaching for this dark grey dilution. I made these bottles from India ink and mixed them with water so that I can have several dilutions to hand. And this was really helpful for Inktober. I 100% recommend if you're taking part. We're using the wet on dry technique now. I felt like using pure India ink might stand out a little bit too much, might be a little bit dark. So that's why we're using the diluted version. Grabbing the tiniest bit of yellow again to add some light to this old lamp post. This painting is a simple one, but it means we can have a little bit of a break before spending longer on the others. And this is the finished look. Now for prompt 16. Ooh, owl, that could be fun. Obviously we're gonna create an owl. I've never made an owl, so I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm reaching for my Artex SimTap markers for this one because we're after some nice juicy acrylics. We're drawing an owl, my first ever owl actually, and creating it in a slightly abstract style. Honestly, these first two pieces are very different to my usual art. I don't really have a clear art style. I create a whole load of random stuff, as you'll see for this week's prompts. But this time, we're drawing the owl in blocks of colour. Though, this didn't go as planned. I think originally, I was imagining it to be a little bit more like a chisel tip look. So, almost squares of colour layered on top of each other. But, because these markers are a brush tip, it looks a lot more like lines. I mean, it kind of works, it just wasn't what I was after. One thing I like to do in these challenges is to make sure each spread looks different to each other. I make the sketches beforehand, but I don't actually choose the colours until I'm creating each piece. The previous page was yellow, pink and blue. So, for this background, we're using purple and grey tones with some pink and blue, of course. So I guess it's not actually that different. When it comes to creating people, and animals. What really ties the piece together is the eyes. Every single time, as soon as I've drawn the eyes, I feel a million times better about the piece. And it was the same here. Doesn't it look better now that the owl has eyes and not just a blank void? Prompt number 17 is slow. Honestly, the first thing I thought of is a tortoise, which could be really cute, but we've just had owl. You could do like a really old card. There's so many different things you could do. That's a really good prompt. I had a few good ideas for slow until I found out that it kind of needs to match the next prompt. That made it a lot harder. So, we're going in with wet on wet to paint a sky, giving watercolour another try on this paper. I mean, it's my medium, so of course I'd like to use it for this challenge. But this is only a Royal Talons art creation sketchbook, so the paper does get very warped. 
and it's not 100% cotton. So watercolour is an experience. We're painting a hot air balloon in a slightly steampunk style, which I've never done before. And I don't know much about steampunk, so I'm just basing this on Assassin's Creed Syndicate. That's my go-to for this kind of style. We're adding rope and cogs, using quite a muted colour palette, full of dark red and purple tones, but allowing the background to show through because I think it's quite pretty, isn't it? I really like the blurry look that you can get with the wet on wet technique, though unfortunately I wasn't able to do this for the next one, which you'll see in just a moment. For now though, this one is almost done, just reaching for some colour pencils for a little bit more definition. Number 18 is fast. We've got slow and fast, which means they need to go. That's gonna narrow down what we choose, but you've already seen one, so let's go to the second. We made a hot air balloon for slow, so can you guess what we're making next? The prompt is fast, so what's the opposite? I'd say it's a rocket. We're using the exact same technique and colours to really make these two pieces go together. Lots of pink and purple showing through Payne's grey to make our galaxy. We're using the exact same shades as before, though unfortunately this time it's not wet on wet because that probably would have made the galaxy spread everywhere. So it doesn't have the same look as the hot air balloon, but we still have those ropes and ornaments features that are associated with all things steampunk. I hope that that comes across and I hope that this has the same feel as the last one. I'm grabbing some colour pencils again to define those details and also bring back the line work that got lost with the darker watercolour paint. I have a pretty solid method when it comes to galaxies because they're my favourite comfort thing to paint and I actually have a 10 step tutorial that I'll pop down below if you want to paint one yourself but this is my first time not using gouache for this. We're using a gel pen instead for the stars and highlights and honestly it actually worked surprisingly well. Moving on to prompt 19, crocodile, which I've actually already done. I did it last year for Chomp. The other option is something like crocodile tears you might be able to do. So the question is, do I really want to paint another crocodile for the peach Tober art challenge? I mean, if you've seen the planning video, you'll know that this prompt took quite a few chaotic, traumatizing turns. I mean, we basically created a monster, but I think you'll like the route we're going now. It's not scary. It's a face in a really fun style. I've actually created a lot of portraits in this style, and I love how they all end up looking different, depending on how the paint decided to react with water in that moment. There's something really unique about it. I actually I actually did some really small ones in my 100 Hedge Challenge sketchbook tour that you might have seen recently. They were tiny. Am I really going to pull this together? We're using watercolour in a loose flowy style and painting a face, which is green, kind of like a crocodile, with a crocodile tear falling down their face. So I guess you could say there's two crocodiles here. And with this line work, the face is really coming together now. I have an idea. What if we glue in some paper, which could completely ruin this painting? Still, I've got some scissors and and some interesting paper. We need something that's dark and textured so it's not completely black. And I think this forest will work perfectly, though we only need a small piece. The pupil is in the shape of a crocodile's pupil, so it's a little bit more like a line rather than round like ours. To lean into this prompt just a little bit more. The big question though is did I ruin it? What do you think? Does the added scrapbook paper actually work? We're making some pretty good progress, let's move on to prompt 20. Rest. Okay, rest is nice. Somebody sleeping, or like a bed, a bedroom, or a hammock, a hammock could be cool. Or you could do an animal, a sleepy animal. There's a lot we can do for that one.
This prompt was another one where I had two good but very different ideas. One was a person sleeping in a hammock on a beach with palm trees. The second, a cute sleeping little cat. So obviously we're drawing the little kitty. We're back to alcohol markers. Because we actually haven't used them yet for this week of prompts. We did a lot in the first week. But this week's focus has been on painting. Which has been a lot of fun. I'm using coral pink for the background. And realising that this is actually looking pretty similar to crocodile. Obviously different. And a different medium. But there are splashes with a white background. Well anyway, moving on to the kitty. I've never been able to successfully draw a human with their eyes shut, so let's see if I can manage it with an animal instead. I'm blocking in lots of colours and attempting to blend, kind of, but I'd still like this cat to be in a loose style, without too much detail, without too much line work. So. We're just keeping it simple, which is needed, because the next one is a lot more tricky. And the final prompt of week three, greenhouse. 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 I mean, it would be really cute to just do like a little greenhouse with little flowers and plants. Maybe we'll do that, I'll have to get sketching. Since the alcohol markers are already out, that's where we'll start. We are drawing a fairy greenhouse. It was suggested on the live stream by my friend Allison, and honestly, I don't exactly know what it means. I don't know if it's an actual thing, but this is what I thought of, okay? A greenhouse with coloured glass attached to a tree, kind of like a birdhouse, in the middle of a forest with a mushroom growing out of it. The mushroom isn't essential, but I don't know, whenever I think of fairies, I think of mushrooms. Maybe that's just me. I'm blocking in the furthest parts of the forest so it will look a little bit blurry like it's further away, and then adding the coloured glass panes of the greenhouse because this is a fun greenhouse and it's kind of reminding me of that piece that I made for the create this book the prompt create stained glass where I painted a stained glass church I'll leave that episode below if you want to check it out after this one but this is what it reminds me of and of course we can't forget the classic mushroom I'm loving this color palette so far it's a little crazy but I love all the pastel tones on the glass now that the majority of the drawing has been filled I'm grabbing some acrylic markers to add just a little extra something. I left these gaps on the edge of the closest trees because I'm thinking if we add the acrylics and a little bit of dry brushing then maybe it will just look like bark and if these trees have more detail then the other ones will definitely look further away. That's the idea. Popping some vines down too to complete this page and I think it's looking really cute. It's my first time combining alcohol with acrylic markers and I think it really worked. And that's the third week all wrapped up. Subscribe so you don't miss the final week. And a half, this one's a bit longer. Have a lovely rest of your day. I'll see you on Sunday for a spooky video. And then we'll be back here on Thursday. Bye bye.